Inside this box is a follow-up to one of the most iconic Jordan sneaker colorways of all time. Realistically though, it's only a name. These shoes look nothing like the Olympic 7s. Or hey, maybe all the pictures online are wrong. I haven't seen these in person yet, so these could look just like the Olympic 7s, but pretty sure they don't. As you already know from the title and the thumbnail of today's video, these are the Air Jordan 4 Paris Olympics. Similar to the Olympic 7s in that they're Olympics themed, but uh, different in pretty much every other way. So I actually have yet to open these guys up, so why don't we open them up together and see if they're as good as they look online. Before we do that though, let's take a quick look at the box, which as you can tell is definitely concrete themed. It looks like a concrete block. Actually, that's kind of funny because a couple years ago, Jordan Brand sent me a concrete box for the Flying It Bread Ones, back in 2016 actually. and. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not not as similar as I was expecting. Never mind, bad example. So kind of like the Nina Chanel Air Jordan 3's box, this box features this sort of rough, almost like sandpapery texture. On the top of the box, you've got this really subtle but glossy Jumpman with the fly text underneath. All the other sides of the box come in that same concrete print. It's actually a pretty clean looking box, I'm not gonna lie. And of course, on the front, you've got the size tag. This is a size nine. The official colorway of this shoe is smoke gray, Iron Gray. So this shoe doesn't release for like a month, I'm pretty sure. I think it's July 27th is the official release date of this shoe. In the $200 range, I think it's $225, but we'll share that up later on in the video. I grabbed my pair from Fine Line 1721. Well, let's pop them open, see what we've got. Inside of the box, same print. You've also got the speckle print paper. But let's pull out the kicks, see if they remind us of Paris at all. All right, the Paris Olympics Air Jordan 4s in a very monochromatic gray, concrete themed colorway. I mean, they're cool looking. They're definitely cool looking. They've kind of got that same sort of gradient that the Air Max 95s have. I know that's not the inspiration here, but it definitely has that same sort of vibe to it. You've got this nice monochromatic colorway that fades from like a dark gray on the outsole to a lighter gray towards the top of the sneaker, specifically ending on the sock liner of the shoe. And I didn't notice this online, but I'm seeing it now. It looks like a lot of the details that you usually find in Air Jordan 4s are not the way that they usually are, it's a terrible way of saying it, but they've removed a lot of the details and instead replaced them with a pressed, I guess, accent or design. So the netting on the shoe is, instead of being actual netting, just a leather with this pressed square texture. The tag on the tongue of the sneaker, same deal. It's not actually a real sewn on tag, it's just a, a pressed detail into the leather. And I'm not gonna lie, it is cool, it is different, and I like that about it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> they're gray Air Jordan 4s. I feel like this is one of those shoes that you really gotta try on to get that wow factor. So I'm excited to try these on. And uh, I guess at this point, why don't we do that? Why don't we go upstairs, try them on, see how they fit, and uh, I'll wear them around for a bit and give you guys a full review. Are you an Olympic fan at all, or Olympics fan? I mean, isn't everyone? Not everyone, but are you a fan of these? These are Olympic themed shoes. Oh, cool, how so? You know what, that's a good question. Apparently they're inspired by Paris. Um, oh, also, while I'm putting these on, probably should have fully put the shoe on before I said this, we've got the brand new Apothecary 80s Game Night collection dropping. You can see the, the coin sock that I have. It's like inspired by retro coins. Pretty cool. I don't know if you ever played Mario. Oh, duh. But, Bring. That's the sound. <laughs> they feel a little tight, but I think it's because I just literally haven't loosened these at all. Yeah, they definitely feel true to size. I actually like them a lot on foot. So sizing wise, I would say that these do fit true to size. They feel like a standard pair of fours. Nothing like exceptionally different. They do feel a little tight around the toe, but I don't think that's because of the material or the sizing of the shoe. I think that's just because I haven't totally loosened the laces. So wait, what would you give them out of 10? I don't know, they're nice. Maybe like a seven. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Nice score. Well cool, back to the studio. So in my opinion, this is a pretty low-key sneaker release. I didn't even know the shoe was dropping until about a month ago when I saw images of this sneaker online and I was like, you know what, those sneakers are fine, nothing special. But now that I have them in hand, while I still don't think they're anything special, I do like them more than I expected. I'm not gonna say it's a sneaker of the year contender, but it is a decent overall shoe and I think Jordan Brand did a good job with it. So apparently the inspiration is the street culture of the City of Lights, which is Paris and uh, apparently they're concrete. So I don't really mind when an inspiration for a sneaker is kind of weird. I think Paris is a great inspiration for a pair of sneakers. One of the most iconic sneakers of all time is the Paris SB Dunks. Now that shoe was obviously inspired by the art of Paris, the art in Paris. Um, which I think is a stronger inspiration, I'll be real with you. But for some reason, they decided to take inspiration from the sidewalks of Paris. Which, don't get me wrong, the sneaker looks good. I do like the sneaker a lot. And if their original idea was a gray gradient, sure, that makes a lot of sense, I guess. Um, but I don't think it's the strongest inspiration in the world. Honestly, I don't really care about inspirations. I just want the sneaker to look good. It's just that Nike relies so heavily on inspiration and storytelling to market their sneakers. And sure, maybe gray is the color of Paris. I've been to Paris. It, I guess there was gray. Uh, as there is in most cities. I don't know, if your inspiration is Paris and the Paris Olympics of all things, like look at the Olympic 7s. That's a multicolor sneaker that makes sense. It looks like the Olympic rings, like it, it makes sense. This one, 
<laughs> weirdly enough, it's not the only sidewalk themed sneaker that's released in the last couple months. The Philly Dunks, the entire gray upper of this shoe is inspired by the sidewalks of Philly. That's what it's inspired by. There are other accents that are multicolor, like the mural accents on the uh, sock liner and on the heel, but the accents of the shoe are inspired by the sidewalk. And even on this shoe, I thought that was kind of a weak inspiration, I'm not gonna lie. But there's still a lot of accents and still a lot of cool hidden details on the shoe that I think it redeems itself with. Plus, all the different grays in the shoe come in different material treatments, so there's a lot going on here. And I think if you're gonna create a shoe inspired by a sidewalk, this is probably the better way to go. But hey, at this point all might be moot because I really like the way that the sneaker looks. I think that the color gradient is awesome. It reminds me a lot of the cause. I think it's different for a pair of Air Jordan 4s. I haven't really seen this before except on the pair of cause or maybe the cool gray 4s or something like that. And uh, it's a good looking sneaker. So while I'm harping so much on the part of Paris that they took inspiration from, I still think they, they knocked the sneaker out of the park. I think it's a really good looking shoe and I probably shouldn't be hating. Crazed ramblings out of the way. Let's talk about how you can get this pair of sneakers for yourself. This shoe drops on July 27th for a retail price of $225, which yes, is higher than a standard pair of fours because this shoe is technically more premium than a standard pair of fours. And we'll get into those details later on in the video. But hey, if you wanna grab this pair for yourself, of course you can grab it through FineLine1721 on his website or you can check them out through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. It's a really great sneaker. You can grab it for I wouldn't say around retail, but closer to retail than a lot of sneakers that are a month early. And because of that, I genuinely don't know what the hype is going to be like on this shoe. My guess is that it will sell out, but probably not resell for anything over retail. I don't know. That's just a guess. I don't make resale predictions on this channel. It's not what this channel is about. It's purely about the love of sneakers. But hey, with that being said, let's dive into the sneaker itself. Let's check out all the premium accents and make up this pair of Paris Olympic Air Jordan 4s. So starting off around the toe of the sneaker, you've got this cracked leather mudguard in this dark gray material. It's almost got like a glossy finish to it or a semi-gloss finish and it reflects the light nicely, especially when most of the other shoe is matte. So it's kind of a cool contrast that you've got there. Moving up from there to the toe, you've got this medium gray nubuck panel that actually wraps almost the entire way around the upper of the shoe. It's very simple. It's very clean. It's not buttery. I wouldn't say it's buttery. It's just a kind of standard Nubuck panel, but it does feel nice. Very smooth. However, it does crease pretty quickly. I wore the shoe once for like 10 minutes and it creased already, but you know, that's just sneakers for you, I guess. And then moving up from there, you get to one of the first premium details on this shoe, and that's the removal of the standard Air Jordan 4 netting. And Jordan brand decided to replace that with more Nubuck material, the same material that you find on the toe, and debossing it with a netting texture. Now, I kind of like what they did here. I think they could have gone a bit more simple and maybe just gone with a, a plain Nubuck all the way up the tongue, or do what they did on the Air Jordan 4 Columbia's from 2015, where it was a more premium version of the Air Jordan 4's, and they replaced the netting with leather and then punched holes in it. It didn't look as good, I don't think, as the uh, as the netting, but it did look more premium and it gave the shoe a very different, unique look. And I kind of like that. And I wouldn't have minded that on this shoe, but the way that they decided to go about it by debossing this netting texture into the new buck is fine. Obviously, you're not gonna get any airflow in this shoe, but let's be honest, you didn't get any in the standard pair of fours at all. I mean, sure, you've got netting on the standard pair of fours, but then you've got mesh beneath that and then a backing beneath that, so there's really no airflow. These military blues are kind of cooked. I've been wearing these a lot. Uh, the good news is, though, Apothecary gives you a free sneaker wipe with every purchase, so I have a bunch of sneaker wipes, so I'll probably clean that up with an Apothecary sneaker wipe later on. I didn't realize how dirty that was until I saw it in the light. I probably shouldn't even be holding this. Continuing up on the shoe, you get to more of that medium gray on the eye stay of the sneaker. And then overlaid on top of that, you've got these two TPU accents. Of course, the one towards the bottom of the toe that has eyelets in it. And then the one at the top of the tongue, the wing detail, which also has eyelets in it towards the top. Now this material is the same standard TPU material that you get on most pairs of Air Jordan 4s. However, it is slightly different in the treatment, or I guess the, uh, the finish, in that they added this very, very subtle uh, splatter print. It's pretty different than what they usually do on Air Jordan 4s with splatter print. It's very, very small splatters and it's designed to look more like concrete than anything else. And it's also very subtle. I didn't even notice it until I got these shoes in hand, but it's a nice touch. I don't mind it. I like when they add sort of small, subtle details, so I'm into it. Of course, weaving through the eyelets on the shoe, you get these flat gray laces, which do seem to be wax, lightly waxed at least. Then weaving through the eyelets of the shoe, you've got these flat gray laces that do seem to be lightly waxed, not much though. They do come in a lighter gray than the rest of the sneaker that we've talked about, obviously, because they're closer to the top of the shoe and it's a gradient that goes from dark gray at the bottom up to a lighter gray at the top. You don't get another set of laces in the box, unfortunately. I think that's okay because why would you want another set of laces? It would kind of ruin the visual effect of this shoe. That being said, I don't think the Union LA yellow laces will look bad in this shoe. I don't think, uh, White? No. No, it would really have to be yellow in my opinion. I think yellow is the way to go. Maybe the yellow laces on the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1s that I have up, you can't see them, but up there. You could use any color. It's a gray shoe. You could literally throw in any color and it would look fine. But I do think by changing the lace color, you would ruin this gradient effect. So that's probably why they didn't give you another set of laces because they don't think you need it. Underneath the laces, you've got more of that uh, a debossed Nubuck material. And then at the top of the tongue, the Nubuck switches from a medium gray to a lighter gray. It also becomes a little bit butterier. Is that a word? 
more like suede, I guess. And then debossed into the tongue, you've got the Jordan Jumpman, the fly text, and then the outline of what would be the tag if they had stitched in the tag. It's actually a nicely thought out hit. I realize I've been giving this to a lot of crap uh, because it's a concrete theme sneaker, but for a concrete theme sneaker, they've done a good job because this deboss logo really gives this shoe a very concrete effect. Like they, they pressed the Jumpman into a, a wet piece of concrete and it made this, this look. And I think that's very, very cool. I wouldn't have minded a tongue tag, but I think this is actually a really cool way to do it. Um, and I like it. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got this really premium feeling material. I don't know if it's actually more premium or not, but it seems like this really nice light gray suede. It's also a lighter gray than any other part of the shoe because it's basically the top of the sneaker. It feels very, very nice to the touch. It feels softer and more um, wrinkly than a standard. I, not that wrinkly is a great thing on a sock liner of a shoe, but it does feel way nicer than a standard pair of Air Jordan 4s when it comes to their sock liner. It also does that thing where you wipe it one way, it gets lighter, wipe it the other way, it gets darker. It doesn't really matter because it's on the sock liner, but it does feel more premium and I appreciate that about it. The insole of the shoe is kind of your standard Air Jordan 4 insole. It comes in gray with the Jumpman in a slightly darker gray on the heel of the shoe. Nothing special there. It's the same sort of material that you get on your standard insoles. Very floppy. Getting back to sizing and fit, like I said, the shoe does fit pretty much true to size. The more that I've worn it, I do think it is a bit stiffer than a standard pair of fours because the material honestly seems a bit stiffer than a standard pair of fours. So true to size is fine, but if you want a looser fit, go up half a size. I think you should be fine doing that as well, but I still recommend true to size. Continuing back in the shoe, you get to more of that deboss netting on the midfoot of the shoe. It's fine. I don't mind it. From a distance, it looks like Standard netting, but close up, obviously, it's it's not. Moving even farther around the shoe, you get to more of that same medium gray nubuck material. And then moving to the heel of the shoe, you get to this dark gray heel tab with more of that sort of light gray splatter print like you saw on the wing of the shoe as well. Something I just noticed is that this light gray material does seem to be semi-translucent. So you can actually, I can see the light coming through it from my studio. Probably won't really notice that when you're wearing the shoe, but it is not opaque like some of the other Air Jordan 4 heel tabs. Then moving down on the shoe, we get to the darkest part of the sneaker, the midsole and outsole, which obviously comes in this very dark gray. I really like this monochromatic look on this shoe. It's the tonal grays are sick. The way that it's a gradient from bottom to top is, is really, really interesting. Yes, it does have cause vibes and I'm sure some people will like it because of that, but it is also clean in its own unique way. Finally, moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this entirely dark gray outsole with this lighter gray jump man in the midfoot. And uh, that pretty much rounds off this gradient look from bottom to top. So while I don't love the inspiration behind this shoe, I do think it's a very, very clean and very, very wearable sneaker. It's one of those shoes that when you see it in hand, you're like, eh, it's fine. But then you get it on feet and you're like, wow, that's actually pretty clean. Is it one of the best sneakers of the year? In my opinion, no. But it is definitely a clean look and one that if you find it in store for retail or maybe even under retail if you get lucky, I really don't know what the shoe is gonna do. I would say pick it up. I'd say it's worth it. This is a very, very clean wearable sneaker. And if you're looking for a subtle Air Jordan 4, this is not a bad way to go. I really like it a lot. And you know what? If they had done this gradient in any other color, it probably wouldn't have worked as well, especially on an Air Jordan 4. So you know what? Concrete is fine. Again, all I was saying is that when a brand focuses so much on storytelling and inspiration for a pair of sneakers and then picks you know, the most basic part of a city, the sidewalk, that's where it's like a little, it's a little weird. But hey, you know what? The sneaker came out great. Inspiration doesn't really matter that much. I just think buy a sneaker because you like the way it looks. So there you go. Again, if you want to grab a pair of these for yourself, make sure to check out the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. Let me know your thoughts on the Air Jordan 4 Paris Olympics in the comment section down below. Are you grabbing a pair? Are you not grabbing a pair? I'd love to know all of it. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.